I just RuPaul this shit. Can you tell? Look at the lighting. What? They're rerunning the first season of RuPaul's Drag Race on Logo. I don't know if anybody's watched it, but she, there's a little window that appears where she narrates stuff. Sort of like Mystery Theater 3000. Anyone? Anyone remember that? And she makes fun of her own lighting because really, really. But um, I'm a new YouTuber and there are a lot of people that I follow. Uh, some are good, some are not so good. Um, then I follow them for a while, then I unsubscribe, then I follow other ones. I'm still learning and watching and, and putting my own spin on this format. But a lot of them have like professional studio lighting. I mean, really, they have these panels and... Okay. But, um, so... I had been a big proponent of what I'm about to show about two years ago, and then for some reason I forgot about it. Coconut water. Coconut water is one of those things that, as a little kid, because I grew up, you know, in a tropical country. I grew up in Panama. It's one of those things that you knew about were all around good for you, and when I would go to the beach, you know, everybody drank coconut water. It was supposed to be good for your kidneys, and then the fitness and uh, food industry kind of rediscovered it about four years ago. And when I lived in Los Angeles, I started taking it. And I, I, could, I could tell. It made me feel really good. And I like this brand, Vita Coco. This is the Madonna brand. And I usually do the one with pineapple. I was trying the peach and mango today. Not crazy about it. But I really like the pineapple one. It's one of those. I don't believe there's one generic prescription for everybody. Did you hear me? Herbalife. Um, but, um, I do think that you can try things out and document, you know, what works for you or not. And I think this is a really good one. You know, I really want to go out tonight, but I cannot because I have a marathon day tomorrow at work. And whenever I've done that, this is how, this is how things change when you get older. The next day I'm like, rah, 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 rah. Um, so I'm in and so I'm watching movies and, um, I'm always looking on, I feel like Amazon has a better selection of gay movies than Netflix and for that reason I was going to eliminate my Netflix membership because really that's the only reason I have them. I watch a documentary here and there there, and believe it or not I also go into their faith and spirituality because I'm into that stuff. Uh, but... I have to say that as of late, I've noticed that their gay content has improved. And I just watched a movie called Christopher and His Kind. It's about Christopher Isherwood, for those of you who don't know who he is or who he was. He was a, a writer, an English writer, um, who spent some time, in Berlin, some time in Berlin in the early 1930s. Uh, and he wrote a book about it, actually, that that's what... Um, the movie Cabaret is based on. And I had seen a documentary about his life about two years ago called Don and Chris. And so I just watched it on Netflix and I have to say, very good. Look it up. Christopher and his kind. All right, so I want to talk about something because I need to post the video and um, there's nothing really going on. Um, so there's this YouTuber named Pano. I think I pronounced his name right. I follow him and he's cute and funny and really young. I think he's 18, 19, he's in his freshman year in college, and he made a post last week about, um, basically he was responding to people having a negative reaction to him twerking, and I guess they were like, ooh, you seem a little more femme these days, and, you know, butch it up, and he had a, a negative reaction, as he should, um, that you know, gay men should not discriminate against feminine gay men. Not that he is, he he's perfect. But I, I wanted to comment on that um, because it's something that bothers me too, which is prejudice within the, within the gay community. It's like when Oprah did the show about how uh, if you were lighter skin, the goal was to be lighter skin, um, or, or darker skinned girls got discriminated against. It's the same thing, or I think it is, in that, you know, you would think a minority wouldn't discriminate against itself, but it does happen. So gay men discriminating against feminine men is so absolutely wrong and negative because it is basically saying that feminine energy is less important than masculine energy, and it's not. And I think 
it's it's time that we recognize that it's an important part of our universe, our society, and we need to value both masculine and, and feminine energy, um, you know, and have a sense of reverence for both. Um, the sooner we do, the faster our society will evolve. And, um, you know, I also think it's ironic when gay men discriminate against feminine men. If it weren't for them, we wouldn't be liberated.